The Nikon Z 14-24mm f2.8 S lens recently came out. Back in August, I also had the chance to test out the Nikon Z 20mm f1.8. In this video, I'm going to compare the two lenses and share my thoughts on which one I prefer for astrophotography and nightscapes. Hello everybody, I'm Will Cheney. I've been looking at a new lens for astrophotography and nightscapes for a little over a year and a half now. Recently, I was able to test out both the Nikon Z 20mm f1.8 S lens and the Nikon Z 14-24mm f2.8 S lens. If you're trying to find a new lens for astrophotography and nightscape images, stick around to see which lens I like better and to also see a couple of comparison images between the two. So before I run through a couple of my comparison images, I just want to run over a couple of the key specs that are different between these two lenses. A few things to be noted, the 14-24mm to lens does have adjustable focal lengths, so where the 20mm is just a prime lens. Another key difference between the two lenses is that on the 14 to 24 millimeter, the maximum aperture is only 2.8. So where on the 20 millimeter, it's 1.8. In terms of astrophotography, I think that 1.8 really lends a hand to the 20 millimeter lens. Now the next thing that I would look at just between the two is the weight. The 14 to 24 millimeter weighs in at 1.4 pounds and the 20 millimeter weighs in at 1.1. So the 20 millimeter is a little bit lighter. Is it really that big of a difference? Probably not. You're not probably going to notice it in your backpack if you're flying on a plane, but it is a little bit lighter. And just a bonus one on this, uh, if you are looking at using this lens for other things like landscape photography, uh, one thing to note, the 20mm lens has a minimum focal distance of 7.92 inches, and the 14-24 to has a minimum focal distance of 11 inches. So if you're trying to get in close on an object, that will make a difference. Another thing to look at on this lens is going to be the size of it. So the 14 to 24 millimeter has a length of 4.9 inches and then 20 millimeter has a length of 4.27 inches. So again, the 20 millimeter wins out again just from a size perspective. And then the final thing to look at is the size of the filters that fits on these lenses. So for the first time, Nikon has a 14 to 24 millimeter that actually takes a filter. However, the filter is 112 millimeter thread. So you're looking at a pretty large filter to go out on the front of your lens, and that's gonna get expensive. However, in comparison, the 20 millimeter lens accepts a 77 millimeter filter. So it's a lot smaller and it's gonna be a lot cheaper. And finally, one thing to look at on these lenses and compares the price. The 14 to 24 comes in with a price tag of about $2,400 after tax, leaving you about $2,600 out of pocket. Compare that to the 20 millimeter f1.8, rings in at around $1,000. You can get it a little above or a little below, depending on if it's on sale or not. So for a $1,600 difference, if you're just planning to use a lens for astrophotography and nightscapes, I think hands down you go with the 20 millimeter f1.8. So next off, I want to go through and compare a couple of images that I took with the 14 to 24 and also the 20 millimeter. All right, so let's start jumping into a couple of photos here. So this was taken with the Nikon Z 14 to 24 millimeter f2.8 lens. If you wanna see more on this lens, I have a link down below in the description. In that video, I go a little more in depth on the specs and looking at different images. So looking at this one here, uh, this is at 14 millimeters f3.5. Uh, little bit of star trailing going on in the corners, uh, honestly, kind of just throughout the entire image. And that's just from the 25 second exposure. So real quickly, what I wanna do if the computer will let me is flash through three different photos really quick. So I'm gonna start here on the F3.5 image. And what I'm gonna do is go through the three images real quickly, uh, the F3.5, the F3.2, and the F2.8. And what you'll notice as I go through them is when you get to the F2.8, there's a lot more vignetting. And you'll see that as it switches between the three photos. So that'll just give you an idea of how when you go into that maximum aperture that you start getting more vignetting and it's a lot more noticeable. Uh, so now that we're at the maximum aperture, uh, just one thing to look at real quick, uh, maybe a little bit of coma on this star here and on this one here, but other than that it's a pretty clean image. Uh, like I went over in my other video, it's really got great optics, so great lens here. So this is just another set of images at 14 millimeters on the 14 millimeter to 24 millimeter f2.8. So just going through these again, you'll notice the same issues with the vignetting. Uh, because I'm going to go from 2.8 to 3.5 this time, uh, you'll notice that it actually gets brighter out in the corners.
And one thing you'll notice here going backwards, the 3.5 and the 3.2, really not a whole lot of difference between those two. But then when you drop from the 3.2 to the 2.8, you definitely get a lot darker out in the corners. And again with this one, just looking out here at the edge, it uh, looks like really no coma in these stars. Uh, really pinpoint stars. I had a 20 second exposure time on this one, so that may have helped me out a little bit. Uh, you'll notice the star trailing out here on the left side. You get a little bit more, um, and that's just being out at the edges of the lens. So the next image here, this is just one of my favorite photos that I've ever taken. This one was taken with the Nikon Z 20mm f1.8 lens in some of the darkest skies in the nation. You can really see just how well, honestly, any lens would perform out in an area that's this dark. Uh, so this one, ISO 6400, 20 millimeters, f1.8, uh, and a 20 second exposure. So just kind of zooming in here in the middle, pretty pinpoint sharp stars. Uh, you'll get a little bit of coma out here on the edges on these brighter ones. And you'll notice again, like the other photos, same with the 14 to 24 millimeter lens, you'll get that little bit of star trailing that's more evident out in the corners. But overall, just a really clean image for a 20 millimeter lens. So unfortunately, back whenever I had rented the 20 millimeter lens, I wasn't really thinking about making a YouTube video or anything going through to evaluate the 20 millimeter lens. Uh, luckily, I did go through one sequence of shots where I at least tried shooting at f1.8 and f2.2. So on these two images, again, you'll notice that the f1.8, as you probably expect by now, would have a little bit more vignetting going on out in the corners, uh, and the f2.2 is not gonna have as much. So I'll go ahead first and take a look here in the corners on this 20 millimeter shot uh, with the Nikon Z 20 millimeter lens. A Little bit of coma still on these brighter stars like I showed in the last image. Uh, you can definitely notice it's a little bit darker here. So now just taking a look at this one real quick between the f1.8 and the f2.2. So again, on these two pictures, I went ahead and I matched the exposure between the two of them. Uh, and you'll just notice again that as we go to the f2.2 that it's going to get a little bit brighter out in the corners. It is a little noticeable as you go through it a lot quicker, just going back and forth between them a few times. Uh, but overall, I mean, I'm happy with either one of those shots. So just one more photo here. Uh, just if you want an idea of what one of these photos looks like edited, this is just one of the edits that I put together on it. Uh, and if you want to see more of these images, uh, see the link down below in the description. I'm going to have the full post link down there where you can go over to my website and I'll actually have all of these test images so you can pull them up and actually take a look at them the way that you'd like to. And while you're down there in the description, don't forget to subscribe to my channel while you're here. And don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. So in conclusion, I think both of these lenses are fantastic. It really just depends on how much you're willing to spend and I think if you have multiple reasons for the lens. So the 14 to 24, if you're shooting astrophotography and nightscapes only, I think I'd lean with going the 20 millimeter. However, if you're also looking at shooting a lot of landscape photography as well, I think the 14 to 24 millimeter starts to become worth it. It's a great lens and it completes the holy trifecta. However, the 20 millimeter, you're still gonna get good landscape photos with it. There's no doubt about that. You just won't be able to get quite as much as the wide angle on it. So if you've stuck around this long, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the thumbs up button down below. And don't forget to subscribe. Thanks everybody. See you guys next time.